Let's make it a good day. Coming up today, Conan O'Brien is the victim of a robbery and a strange one at that. What happened to us? The details just ahead in the hot dish. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale. Then find out how the Gilligan's Island theme song was used as a weapon in a neighborhood battle royale. And throwback Tuesday, we're looking back at some hysterical classic toy commercials. Charlie's Angels Adventure Band, new from Hasbro. Each sold separately. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to the show. We are live from our studios in the Twin Cities. Thank you for watching. I'm Jace. Happy, happy Tuesday. Please say hello to my good friend, my sister from another mister, the lovely and talented Kendall. Hello. Good morning, Kendall. Good morning, Jason. How you doing? It's pretty good. It's a Tuesday. Tuesdays, mm. But I love Tuesdays with you. Thank you. I love, to, <laughs> I love any day ending in day with you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I get it. Even though we don't spend Saturdays and Sundays together, I like the rest of the days with you. That's true. Mm -hmm. It's very true. I mean, we've seen each other on the weekends before, but typically yes. you're with your husband and I'm with mine, and that's the way it should be. It is, it is the way it is. That's mm -hmm. the way, way it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I'm uh, a little excited. This, this week is the beginning. If you've been with us for a while, you know that I, I have a, a couple jobs. I have this, and then I do a radio show over on My Talk 107.1. And one of the signature things that um, my talk does is this big charity event called Project Down and Dirty. And every year it has a theme. Uh, one year we lived at the state fair. Another year we joined the military for a week. Another year we ran a restaurant. We've put on a musical. We've put on a rock concert. This year it is classic radio drama because obviously COVID, they had to do something. So what we were doing uh, all of the weekday hosts, we are recreating uh, a comedic interpretation of Orson Welles' War of the Worlds on the actual anniversary of that radio broadcast in 1938. The broadcast scared the crap out of the country because people thought there really were aliens coming. Uh, that's the gist of it. Right. Yeah, it really. Right. There's a great documentary on PBS called The American Experience that talks about it. But anyway, uh, so we're recreating that. We have, a, we have a Hollywood screenwriter rewriting it for us. And uh, yeah, I mean, I it's was- all go big, yeah. wow. We have music and uh, we're all playing different parts. I'm, uh, I found out my roles yesterday. As of right now, I'm playing Orson Welles. I kind of welcome you to the thing. And then I play uh, a, a pilot <laughs> uh, and a weird stranger. Why is a pilot so funny to you? Uh, because the pilot, I do a, I do a voice. I do a voice on the radio show, and I, it's a character that I do called Lance de Havilland Colby. Uh, and he makes me look like the Marlboro Man. I mean, he's a little, you know, um, and he's, he talks like this, like, hi, this is Lance. And I made the pilot into Lance yesterday. Oh, and yeah, it was joyous. <laughs> anyway, so we did the read through of the script yesterday, and it was really cool. I mean, it was, it was like an old time radio show. We did a Zoom. Uh, a Zoom meeting, you can see that on my talk's Facebook page, but it was, it was good to see all my colleagues. We're all playing different parts and uh, reading the script and seeing how it's gonna come together. We have a, uh, a famous Foley artist who does all the sound effects live, like walking and squish cool. noises for the aliens that come. And it was awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to it. Look, these are always long weeks because on Project Down Under, I go right from here uh, I go to Hubbard, I go to the radio station, and I'm there till about three or four o'clock recording. We, we'll be recording these. It'll be edited together and been presented on Friday, all for charity. Um, yeah, and my charity uh, for, for my show is Little Brothers Friends of the Elderly, which if you don't know what that is, it's a great program that, uh, uh, and there's 50,000 senior citizens in our area that need companionship, especially in the COVID era. Uh, and, and they're doing a phone program where they, they hook you up with a friend, an elder friend, that you call on the phone just to give some human connection to. Oh. Uh, so we're raising money for Little, uh, little Brothers Friends of the Elderly, which I, I just think is fantastic. 
if you would like to donate to that wonderful cause or spread the word about them, again, go to mytalk1071.com. And I'm really proud of all the money that we've raised all over the years. Mm -hmm. I hate doing these charity events. I hate Project Down and Dirties. Everyone that watches or listens knows. I do nothing but complain about them. But the silver lining is we raise a lot of money for some wonderful charities. Right. So. Right. So and for this that, time around, it's kind of like in like your dream wheelhouse. You're doing, classic stuff. Yeah, really, and you're narrating and orating something that's like a classic story. Yeah. I feel like this is just perfect. It'll be for fun. You. It'll be fun. So, mm -hmm. uh, let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Robot Jason. <laughs> for the past several months, Conan has been taping his show from an old theater in L.A. But last night. He revealed that someone broke in and robbed them. Look at this. No, you know what I was thinking about? Like, look at us. What happened to us? This kind of shit isn't happening to other big time late night shows. No one breaks into the Tonight Show and steals all the equipment. What happened to us? I we've think become this, we've become this garage band that drives around. We've got our van. And we parked it in an alley and someone broke in and took our amps. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of new low is this for us? And then who do I have to b What's our security? Our security is a bunch of photographs. Of <laughs> cardboard <laughs> photographs of fans a fan. from across the country. Jason, you've been with me for like 27 years. You've got to admit this is a new low. A new low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the robbers got off with some laptops uh, used for Zoom interviews and the slate, you know, the take two, the slate from Conan. Uh, here's the deal, dumb robbers. You're not going to be able to sell that crap on eBay. You know why? Because then they're going to find out and they're going to arrest you, you moron. I, well, I, you, unless you're a collector, I get it, but what are you doing? Isn't life hard enough right now? I don't know. I keep thinking of this as like a very oceans. If you defend heist. the if you defend the robbers, <laughs> no. I'm gonna remove you from the studio. Listen, more if someone's like, here's a dare, we're gonna do this, and in 30 years we're gonna sell the Conan slate and be like, this was during COVID, and we have these computers that were used. To, you know, I just think that's what's gonna happen with this. I'm not supporting it. It's funny. If that's okay. The case. I will admit, in my in my life of crime. When I was a teenager, Please. I may have driven a getaway car from my friend Megan, who stole a KFC bucket from an abandoned KFC in Indiana. The, the KFC was gone for years, no. and the, there, the, the signs for KFCs used to be these giant buckets. Mm -hmm. She may have had her brother climb up, dismantle the bucket, and they had it in their backyard. That's fabulous. See, that's what I think they did. And I may have driven the getaway car. I might have. Don't throw those stones, Jace. Call Crime Stoppers, 1-800. <laughs> anyway. Crime Someone Stoppers. Someone stole, I know we got to move on, but let me just say this too. We've been the victim of crime here on The Jason Show. In season one, when we had a studio audience, which eventually, we, uh, but uh, I had four unique mugs, four special mugs, not for guests, but for, for us. Systematically throughout season one, when the audience would leave, Susie would be like, is everybody gone? Bloop, and she'd put it in her purse. We lost all four mugs within a couple months. That's what I'm saying. Susie wasn't selling it. She's just holding on to it. Look, I love the fans, but girl, come on. You should see the budget. <laughs> Next in the dish, in honor of Halloween, uh, it has Villains Night. It was Villains Night on Dancing with the Semi Stars. And the stars really embrace the dark side. But before we show you what happened, it is time for our FCC mandated spoiler alert animation so we will not be sued. From Dracula to Freddy Krueger, uh, to Hannibal Lecter. Hello, Clarice. The villains were out. Here's a little montage of the better ones. If I could
That's Alan Burstyn and Sky rebounding from last week's fiasco. Their costume inspired by the Bride of Chucky, and they scored nine. Justina tangoed, inspired by Carrie, also got high praise, but it was Nev. Nev Schulman, who stole the night. He had a perfect score with his black swan inspired Pasa Doble. That was beautiful. That looked really good. Black Honestly, sw- like that, that was really good. Black Swan scares me to death. <gasps> I love that movie. I know. I, that, that, the movie and the whole, I don't know. Oh, it's so good. A creepy bird coming at you. No, <laughs> very scary. But congratulations to Alan. They needed that rebound because mm-hmm. admittedly, I love them, but we'll criticize them when they're not good. It wasn't good. They weren't good. No, no, no. But in the end, two couples landed in the bottom two. It was Monica from Cheer and Jeannie from The Real in a two to two to one vote from the judges. Monica was sent Aww. packing. Yeah. By the way, Jeannie's was insp- uh, dance was inspired by Hannibal, and Monica's was inspired by Nurse Ratchet, Monica. which s- still huge numbers on Netflix. Still huge. Love it. Be- I-, I still do too. Mm-hmm. Ryan Murphy, you finally didn't disappoint me. Just <laughs> thank you. Jeff. Finally. We have a lot more to come. Go get another cup of coffee. We'll be back right after this. The hot dish isn't over. Coming up next, Wendy Williams is speaking out, well, kind of, about her bizarre behavior on Friday's show. Find out what she's saying. Then, neighbors are a feuding, and one is turning to a classic TV theme song as a tool of revenge. And looking for something unique to do this weekend with the family? We're going to take you on a tour of the Franconia Sculpture Garden. The Jason Show will be right back. I had to ask you a question. I did some research on you, and uh, you were a hairstylist before you got into comedy. I was. And... uh, you still, do you still do it? Do you still like work on people's hair? And I'm asking for a reason. I've grown mine out. As you can see, it's, it's really, there we go. It's got a flop. It's got a flop. Is that what the technical term is? It's a flop? Well, you know what I would actually say the technical term is? And the last time I cut hair was last year, pre-quarantine. I gave my husband a haircut and I gave him the Brendan Fraser mummy cut. And I think that's what you have right now. This is what, like, this is what it is? This is the Brendan Fraser mummy cut? Yes, because it's like, it was kind of a bowl, but you know, center part, yours is a little off center. But it kind of did that like little mushroom to the sides, which was cool in 97 or eight. I was cool in 97, 98. We all were cooler in 97, 98. SNL's Heidi Gardner on with Conan last night. Speaking of haircuts, oh, you're looking at a happy guy. I forgot to tell you earlier. Mermaid is back. You know, I get I, the same mm-hmm. woman has cut the Fisher Price hair yeah. for almost 20 years. Her name is Kara, but I call her Mermaid because she believes in mermaids. Mm-hmm. And she disappeared for a while. She went to Oregon. She went uh, horseback. I don't know. She went horseback riding and never came back. Uh, but she's back. And finally, this weekend, I got my hair cut by. There's nothing better. I and she was. I almost started crying. I went to other people. Nothing like the mermaid. No, nope, nothing, like nothing like a nothing like a tailed woman cutting your hair. <laughs> I can't say I've experienced that, but yeah. you know, I, I do know what it feels like to have your person. She is my she's my lobster. Mm-hmm. She's my myrrh. Yeah, I know. I feel that. Next in the dish, there's a lot of speculation surrounding the Willie, Wendy Williams show from Friday. Fans thought, putting it mildly, she was a little off. Well, she addressed those concerns on her show yesterday. Look at this. I always say I love you for watching because I really, really do. Uh, You know, I come here every day and I try to do the best that I can for you. Um, I appreciate you watching. Um, But it's, you know, even after all of these years, it's still work, you know, an effort put in for the hour that I'm out here with you, you know? I guess every day is not perfect, but I'm not a perfectionist. I'm, I'm not perfect. But I do appreciate you putting in the effort to watch us. And I, I love entertaining you, you know? So Wendy has taken off uh, time in the past to deal with her Graves disease and also checked herself into a sober house last year. So 
I, I, I walk carefully with this, not only because of everything I just said, but because I like Wendy. But in all fairness, in all fairness, if this, if how she acted was another talk show host mm -hmm. or another celebrity or another reality star, Wendy would have been all over it, questioning it. And you know it. Right. So to me, that makes it fair game to question. N not only for curiosity, but out of concern. If it's any of those things I listed, a Graves disease, uh, a relapse of any kind, uh, she deserves compassion and not criticism. Having said that, if it's something else, I, I, I watched most of that show now. It was uncomfortable to watch. I, I don't know, I, I, something was going on. That, what we just watched, to me, wasn't an explanation. The, the, the criticism or feedback wasn't about perfection. It, w it wasn't about her mispronouncing a name of a guest in an interview. It wasn't like she uh, went to the wrong thing. It's not about how hard you're working. It's about your health. You, you were acting weird. Mm -hmm. She was responding, it, it, she was responding, it seemed to criticism about how hard she's working. It's not about that. Mm -hmm. she, she didn't address it at all to me, you know? It yeah. was a weird response. It was a really odd response. I watched the clip knowing we were talking about this and I kept thinking I missed the part where she addressed it. Yeah. Because it, it, it at the end of that, all she says is, you guys are a tough crowd. And then she moves on to hot topics about Adele. And I'm like, okay. But I will say, I think we're all having a really hard time processing a pandemic right now. Yeah. Really, and, it, and it, it, I don't know if it's displaying with her in a different way or if it's something like what you're talking about. Well, and absolutely. And look, you know, don't throw stones. I, you know, and I'll watch Jeff whisper uh, and laugh to Ted in just a second, but we all, in these jobs, we mispronounce things and we right. mess up things and we, we, we toss to the wrong story or whatever. Or you go that, blank. Yeah, oh, yeah totally. <laughs> uh, you know, that's not what this is. That's not what this is. It was, it was a prolonged period of weird behavior that has a lot of people worried, legitimately, I think. Next in the dish, uh, look, we're hoping for a healthy and speedy recovery. Uh, for the cake boss. Remember? Remember the story? Buddy had a traumatic, traumatic hand injury at his bowling alley, uh, leaving, uh, let's acknowledge too, he has a bowling alley, but okay, <laughs> leaving him with, a, with permanent damage to his right hand. But we think TLC, his network is going a little too far because they have announced they will air a two hour special in December about Buddy's accident and recovery. In the release, the former Learning Channel said, with the holiday season right around the corner and over-the-top cake commitments stacking up, the stakes couldn't be higher. And above all, can you still be the cake boss if you can't make cakes? The special will air on December 23rd. Very dramatic reading. That was good. Was good. I know a lot of PR people who ever wrote that press release should win a Nobel Peace Prize. That was perhaps <laughs> the best press release about crap I've ever read in my life. Mm -hmm. Warm and fuzzy too. That proves, I mean, they'll, they'll turn, the, the, the email that we sent to each other about this, TLC will turn anything into a show, anything into a show. They just must be so desperate right now. Like, Well, in fairness they are. I mean, you know, right. no one can tape anything, but still. I, I, and who I, wants to watch that before Christmas? Nobody. I mean, who wants imagine? to watch that? That's going to be ugly. Let's gather the family. Come on, kids. Come on, kids. Let's watch Buddy get. Oh. Let's watch <laughs> Buddy get impaled by his bowling alley thing. La, uh, la 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 la. Who's got the eggnog? That's right. Look, Uncle Joe's had a little too much <laughs> over there. He's sleeping already. It's two. <laughs> Next in the dish, file this under uber rich people problems. There is an escalating feud in Southern California between a billionaire and his next door neighbors. The billionaire apparently has a $1 million lawn sculpture, but his neighbors say it, it is an eyesore, so they filed a complaint with the city to have it removed. Now the billionaire is fa fighting back. How? Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. The weather started getting rough, the tiny ship was tossed 
If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. He's been blasting the Gilligan's Island theme at all hours. He thinks by doing so, they'll drop their complaint, but instead, they're now suing him for harassment and, my favorite, infliction of emotional distress. In response to that, the billionaire has countersued, saying they're obsessed with him, and, uh, and, and they've been peeping. They've been peeping. Oh. A word, what, what is it? <laughs> peeping. Uh, the neighbors say they had to set up cameras to get proof of the musical annoyance. That's my favorite phrase of the day. But the billionaire says they've recorded him and his girlfriend swimming nude in their pool. Bravo. Just oh my gosh, make it stop. A tale of a fateful trip that started on this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a tiny sailor. Anyway, okay, seriously? Make it end, Jeff. I know. Now that's, that's when you have too much money. That's when you have stupid money, when you're suing your neighbors. And I don't mean, I, I do not, I don't have a minnow in this pond. But if that guy wants to swim buck naked in his pool, who are you? Well, I feel like he's just making that up because now they're recording him because he's, as you would say, Nutter Butters, yeah. and he's got this giant $1 million sculpture, and now he's playing Gilligan's Island, and they're like at their wits' end. I do want to know do we know, Jeff, do we know what the sculpture looks like? Is it offensive? Like, is it a giant, like, naughty thing or something? I couldn't, I didn't see it. I, I couldn't, in my do we, quick. Ted, research. do we know what the sculpture looks like? It's just expensive, Ted says. Oh, it's expensive. <laughs> but you know, it, you, it, look, I get it. Have you ever fought with your neighbors? No, I grew up without neighbors, and now I love my neighbors. <laughs> okay, here we go. And I she set did, him up. She didn't grow up with neighbors. She just grew up with snakes attacking her on a, on a tire swing. Daddy, get the gun! <laughs> Why did I even ask if you had neighbors? Of course you didn't have neighbors. Of course I didn't have neighbors. Of course you didn't have neighbors. <laughs> Again, you grew up in an area where you could be bitten by a snake on a tire swing. Actually, I had, we did have one neighbor across the street, my family's best friends, and their son stars in a TV show. So, okay, we go neighbor. from you living into the woods to I was uh, I live <laughs> next to a Disney star. I know. No, oh, whatever. Next, whatever. who is it by the way? Uh, Patrick John Fluker. Do you watch uh, Chicago John Fire Kluger who? or Chicago PD? Chicago, <laughs> any of those Chicago shows? No, I don't did watch you any. Watch, no. Did you watch um, the one with the lady and the other lady, Princess Diaries? Next in the dish, <laughs> Harry Styles is out with a new music video for his song Golden. And it involves a lot of running and a lot of shirtless scenes. Take a look. That's Harry's fifth single off his album, Fine Line. What do you think, Kendall? Feeling fine line over here. Women, women love him. Oh yeah, they do. Like my friends Lori and Julia from the radio show, Lori yeah. loves him. He crosses all demographics. He does. I do love him. I, was, I mean, I feel like everyone loves him. Yeah. He's just cool. You know what I mean? He's like an old school rocker, like a Mick Jagger. You oh, know what I mean? Totally. With he his paints, own style. He paints his fingernails and I'm still like, hello, will you marry me? You are married, by the way, just, just FYI. Oh. Hi, honey, I love you. Exactly. <laughs> Great recovery. <laughs> Still ahead. We're opening up the Jason Show mailbag, but next we head north of the metro to a place you may want to visit before it gets too cold. Coming up next, we are injecting a little art into today's show. We'll be right back. Stay with us. A little culture. A little culture, Kendall. Let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. My favorite part of that always, always, is Jake on the drums, his little bounce. That's my favorite part. Every time he does it, I like that. Welcome back. It's a perfect. Oh, that kind of hurts. 
I'm getting too old for this crap. Uh, it's a perfect spot for an impromptu family photo shoot or pictures for your Insta, or as uh, Ted calls it, the IG. Hi, Graham friends. The Franconia Sculpture Garden is full of funky and creative sculptures from artists and the outdoor gallery. As you can imagine, it's an outdoor event is even more popular than ever. I'm giving you a tour. Take a look. I'm Ginger Schulich Porcella. I'm the executive director and chief curator at Franconia Sculpture Park. We're a nonprofit. Our mission is really to educate, inspire, and entertain people with outdoor art and sculpture. It's an outdoor museum, so you can touch things, you can interact with work, and it's free. You can kind of get out of your car, wander around. It's a choose your own adventure sort of situation here. We have a number of tours or paths that you can go and explore on, but it's really um, up to the viewer to, to create the experience for themselves. This is by an artist in New York. Her name's Grace Lee Lawrence, and she creates these biomorphic forms. This is actually a female that's morphing into a head of celery. Sculpture has a great, great butt on it. We don't care if you wear pants, but we definitely want you to wear your mask. We've had about triple the attendance since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's one of the few places where you can be able to socially distance and, and have an experience with art. I mean, we have 43 acres, so there's plenty of space for people to spread out. Even you know, on the weekends when we have thousands and thousands of people here, you still can have an intimate experience uh, with art. Well, yeah, I mean, I think Instagram's changed our entire world, right? I think people like seeing themselves on, on camera. Obviously, this is a great spot to get their photograph taken, and it is very, like, selfieable. And if that's why people come out here, just to get their photograph taken in front of art, I'm fine with that, because at least we're bringing in new audiences. Like, this is a very, like, popular date spot. I was talking with someone recently, and they said, you can tell where someone's at in their relationship based on whether or not they posted about it on Instagram. Like. So people will know when their ex has moved on because like they're with someone new at Franconia. So it's like this marker in a relationship. Like, have you been to Franconia yet? All of the works here at the park have, you know, little, you know, text that goes along with it. So you learn about the artists and their motivations for making the work or how they made it. Um, because we really do want to educate people about the motivations for the artists. You know, the artists have intentions in mind when they make the work, but at the end of the day, um, the viewer completes the work. So it's only with the viewer audience's response to or adding their own ideas into the work that the work's fully completed. So if, if someone coming to the park just sees a st stack of boats, fine, they saw a stack of boats, but they probably didn't see a stack of boats elsewhere. So if that's all you see and that's your initial reading, that's fine too. At least we're still showing you something that you're not going to see every day. Yes, it's a sculpture park, but it's so much more than that. I think the important work that we do, you don't really see here. Like, this is the byproduct of what we really do. It's really what drew me to Franconia. I grew up I grew up on a farm in Illinois, right? And I didn't have access to a place like this. And I think about how, as a kid growing up on a farm in the middle of nowhere, to be able to come to a place like this and how it would expand your mind is really amazing. If they come here and they think, Oh, well, I met an artist from across the world who has a different point of view. That's how we teach empathy, right? By exposing people to different artists and ideas. Like, unless we can teach empathy, we're never going to understand that there's different ways of thinking and being. Absolutely. To learn more about the Franconia Sculpture Park, go ahead, roll, roll the fake applause. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Franconia. Org. And if you missed it, we're going to put this up on our Facebook page just a little bit later. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started on this tropic port. Ah. Still ahead, we're getting into the Jason Show time machine and looking at some classic commercials from decades ago. The theme today, toys, when we come back. Three hours. Love a good throwback. We're, we're going to do this throughout the year because we all kind of figured we all want these nice things. You know, re, a way to remember a simpler time when we could play with our Teddy Ruxpin and when we were done with that, you know, uh, solve the Rubik's Cube, which I was never able to solve ever, ever, ever. Well, it's time to get in the Wayback Machine with a little Tuesday throwback. I'm feeling a little nostalgic for old school toys lately. That's the category. And wait until you see some of the commercials. I did, Kendall, I, I spent, I was in a deep dive, a YouTube vortex, and I found some great 
vintage toys from the late 70s and early 80s. And let's see if some of you remember these. First up, the perfect accessory for young crime solvers. Sabrina, Kelly, and Chris. Yes, Charlie's Angels. Beautiful doll. Here's Charlie's Angels Adventure Van. Imagine headquarters on wheels, a really neat van. With the sides up, the top can be a sun deck or a lookout. A really neat van. A really neat van. You can get binoculars, Kendall. Look at that. I can see that. You can be Sabrina. Oh, my goodness. My cousin Lisa had one of those, and I wanted it, obviously. But They're my, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, Charlie's Angels was the thing. I mean, you have no idea, pop culture-wise, that show was, it was on the cover of Newsweek. I mean, Fair Fawcett, the whole, that ushered in a, a more sexualized era of TV. They had a name for it that I won't say, but anyway, they called it a certain type of television. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because there were women didn't have a lot of clothes on. Oh. Up top. They looked good. They were very beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if Charlie's Angels dolls aren't your thing, how about some hard rockin' dolls? Look at this. Kid, that's the name. Kid, they may look insane. Kid. This is KISS, each sold separately, and you can put them in any crazy pose you want. Any crazy pose you want. Okay, <laughs> these are posable KISS dolls from 1979. Now, my buddy Alexis Thompson and her husband, uh, more so her husband, have this business where they sell vintage toys. And it's these d dolls are from a company I believe called Mego. And Angel, that's uh, Alexis's, Angel Alexis said those are incredibly valuable. Like if you find them at toy uh, shows, make sure you grab them because they are valuable and people love them. So <laughs> little, I can't, seriously look the at those. The laying on the belly like. And I remember those dolls, they had like a wire in them. So when you bent them. Oh, they would stay. They would stay in that position. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Next up, kids uh, have multiple gaming systems to choose from these days, but back in the day, I mean, girl, there was only one that mattered, this one. This commercial is based on a true story. Hello? Tracy, no, we don't need a babysitter tonight, thanks anyway. After a family bought an Atari video game, they had no trouble getting babysitters. Oh boy, God. Hello? Kate, no, we don't need a babysitter tonight, bye. Everybody enjoys yep. Atari. Yep, ladies and gentlemen, that is a commercial for the Atari 2600 from 1981. Trust me when I say this, youngins, if you were a kid in the early 80s, you wanted an Atari 2600. I did not have one. I always thought I was spoiled, but I wasn't quite that spoiled. My uncle Mike had one. Space Invaders, Asteroids, uh, the Swamp Game where you had to jump a Riptide, not Riptide, um, what? Pitfall. Oh yeah, Pitfall, you were like a little explorer. And cool. the, the graphics were so crude. They were just little block people. It was awful, but you didn't care. It was just, you had a video game in your house, and it was the coolest thing ever. Great commercial, too. Like, really pitch it to the parents. Well, I mean, know? it kind of was a babysitter. Right? He-Man was my babysitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally, a toy that tried to... <laughs> I'm not going to make a joke anymore. Uh, a toy that tried to cash in on the fitness... Okay. This is from, like, the late 80s, I believe early 6s. It tried to cash in on the fitness craze of the 80s. But boy, I don't know if this was the right message to send to little girls. Look at this. Look at you, Stretch. showing the world what you can do. One and two. Yeah, look what you can do. Get in shape, girl. Get in shape, girl. You have low self-esteem. Yeah, that's get in shape, girl, workout bar from Hasbro. Basically telling girls, you know what? You better work out, girl. Yeah, and it had a cassette, it had instructions, that bar that probably broke after three tries. Yeah, Ooh. get in shape, girl. I'm just watching and thinking of if she was in my dance class, all the things I would have told her to fix with her arms. But other than that, I can't help it. The bar wow. itself is... <laughs> wow. The bar itself is actually cool, though, because those are, I mean, not for little kids. I just meant, like, as an adult, I'd be like, oh, that's kind of nice for working out. Yeah, to me, I still think, I'm like, okay. What are you trying to tell? I'm not trying to be overly I, sensitive, right. but you better get in shape. 
Right, not just like you could have sold that as like, oh, you're a ballet dancer, yeah. but no, no, like, mama needs It's literally to called energy. Get in Shape Girl, <laughs> which now bad. I say to myself, but I'm just saying. Still ahead, <laughs> we're opening up the Jason Show mailbag when we return, back after this. Get in shape, girl! Who can forget that song from Janet Jackson on this day 30 years ago? Just take that in for a second. Uh, Black Cat was the number one song on the charts. She recorded the song here in Minneapolis. And it was not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. It was the sixth single released from her Rhythm Nation album. The story dedicated to Jace. Get this, Black Cat earned Janet a Grammy nomination for Best Female Rock Performance, making her the only artist in history to receive nominations spanning five music genres. Yeah. Anybody that says that she's not an icon, uh, uh, bite me. Yeah. That's, she's an icon. Yeah. Nobody, uh, who can do that? Five genres. Five like, genres. Wow. Yeah, uh, really cool. pop, uh, uh, polka, uh, uh, country rock. Country western. Country western, swing. We can't even name five. I, 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 I can't. <laughs> By the way, executive producer Lori Fisher, uh, she she does a camel yoga. She does camel yoga classes. She had a get in shape girl. Oh yeah, she sent the photos. Yeah, yep. She looks cool. Of course she did. Mm -hmm. It's time to see what you have to say about the show. Let's open up the Jason Show mailbag. You got mail. Many of you saw my recommendation for the new Netflix documentary, My Octopus Teacher. Uh, you, I talked about that yesterday on the show, and a lot of you, thank you. I love when you guys take our suggestions. You watched it. First up, it's Gail. Hi, Gail. Big thanks for recommending my octopus teacher. It feels nice to have tears for something so stunningly beautiful. A very welcome change for my tears lately. Oh, well, that's going to make me cry, but well, I'm glad. It, that's what it is. It's happy tears. I didn't say that yesterday in my review. I didn't have, like, titanic tears. But my eyes welled up at the end, and you'll see why when you watch it. And Carolyn says, what a beautiful documentary between a human and octopus. Throughout the documentary, with things that happened, I couldn't help the tears from flowing down my cheeks. Yeah, and they are, again, they're like happy tears and sad tears, and you're a little anxious, and you're like, what's going to happen? And get that pajama shark away from the octopus, and yeah, it's all that. <laughs> Next up, Trish asks, when you play pull tabs, are you playing the dollar ones or do you go for the big money, like three or five dollars? And where is your favorite place to play? I've got to tell you, the, the state of Minnesota and all the charities, they owe me something because I'm just, I am the pool tab Dulling king. Out. Uh, here's my strategy here um, I don't waste time usually on the one dollar ones because you're, the payout isn't good. I'm just being blunt. Uh, Two dollars. And I do have a tradition. I do have a tradition. If I have the money on me, if there is a five dollar box, we will always put in $20 in that box. And I learned that from a server friend of mine, Jamie, who every single shift, she puts in one $5 bill into the box and she has won, usually on $5 boxes, you can win up to like $1,500. She has won several times doing that. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale. Sorry. Tale of a fateful trip. That started like on this tropic port. My best friend Maddie, one of my besties ever, lifelong friends, yeah. he sent me a text full of t uh, cuss words telling me to stop that blankety song. Thank you, Maddie. I'm I blaming Leo. That. Uh, anyway, so that's my strategy. And where's my favorite place to play uh, is Serums in Anoka. Yep. Yep. All goes to a good cause, the Anoka mm -hmm. uh, hi uh, Hockey League. Next, Amy posted a question on our Instagram page Jason and Kendall, what are the three best things on your bucket list? I don't know if we can do three, but give me something. Do you have a bucket list item? I do. Two that I really want that stand out. I want to go uh, live in Italy for a year. Oh, okay. That's well, down you have the a job, road. but go ahead. Down yeah, okay. the road, not tomorrow. Okay. Um, and the other one would be to go scuba diving in the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, okay. So mine are all like things to do. What about you? Uh, I want to go to London, and this is no joke. Uh, I've lived most of mine, luckily. Mm -hmm. You know, I really have. Uh, so I really do, I, I'm not going to say never, I want to put it out in the universe, but I have written a treatment 
for, and don't laugh at me, I know the crew will, but I, I have an outline for a treatment of Knott's Landing, and I would love to pitch it. I would love, if I could have another job, I would love to be like an executive producer or showrunner for a nighttime drama like that. It is the huh. one, and I, I, you know, the universe has granted me a lot of my dreams, so I kept upping the dreams. And that's one, I wrote down an outline of how to bring it back and what, he, and what the characters would be, and I would love to pitch that someday. And if I ever, that would be, oh, if I ever had a job like that, like this is my dream, but right. that would just be like icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't think that's funny. Call I think me that's CBS. Cool. Call me. I have a great outline. <laughs> great outline, CBS. Seriously. Ratty. Next up, Christy sent us these adorable photos. She says her <laughs> nine-month-old grandson runs to the TV when he hears our theme song start with Yam House. He gets to the TV and starts dancing, and he also talks to Ken Doll. <laughs> Look at that, Kendall. Oh, I have say, a buddy. Say hi to him, Kendall. He's going to talk to you. Hi, bud. Um, I wish I knew your name, but I hope you're having a really great day and stay warm and eat lots of candy. Look at that. So cute. <laughs> oh, and wearing adorable. the maroon, wearing the, the U of oh, I M. hope these are a Sky U Ma pants. Yeah, Let's look go. at those. Go They're cute. Goldie. I love her furniture, too. Look at us just totally <laughs> looking at her house. Anyway, <laughs> you hey. can stay connected with our show on social media. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to search for Jason Show TV. Uh, the show never stops there. We're going to take a break. The show is stopping right now, but just for a second, we'll be back after this. I was starting to. I was going to make uh, Kendall sign a. Non-disclosure, an NDA. I was starting to tell her my pitch for the Knott's Landing reboot. Mm -hmm. But all kidding aside, it would be a show. It's easily, it would be easily rebootable. <laughs> rebootable. You are I rebootable. I really like that. It's rebootable. Because <laughs> the, the show is based on an old movie called Scenes from a Marriage. Mm -hmm. And it's a cul-de-sac full of different types of couples. So it's way more realistic than Dallas and Dynasty ever was. Huh. So it would be, it's a concept that would work right now. You know right. what I mean? It kind of... I know, not the same, but it kind of sounds like Desperate Housewives in that you're in a neighborhood with different marriages. Absolutely. The creator of Desperate Housewives, huge fan of Knott's Landing. Look right. it, I knew something. You did. Welcome back. Don't forget to sign up and be part of the Jason Show virtual audience. Just go to the Jason Show Facebook page, Jason Show TV, and click on the link at the top of the page. Sign up for a certain day, and you'll be part of the show. And one really quick note, do not worry if we do not get back to you right away. The show staff doesn't handle the audience. Our creative service department does. So if they don't get back to you right away, just pack a little patience. We'll be right back. Stay with us, everyone. What a fun hour. Welcome back. We uh, got some more emails. We were talking about the classic commercials and we showed the Atari 2600. And Karen wrote to us just a few minutes ago. Uh, was the grandchildren, Jeff? And her son-in-law. And her son-in-law and the grandchildren still play the Atari 2600. It's popular, I guess. I, I had heard of it. I yeah. mean, you know, so. Well, executive producer Jeff was very fancy. He was bright. He's like, I had one. Oh, you I didn't one. have one. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't. I mean, admittedly, hashtag know thyself. I was an only child, so Dar's watching. You know, I didn't want for much mm -hmm. in the toy department. Right. Uh, but she made me, you know, my mom was always good about manners, so she made sure that, like, I was generous and always drilled that in. I was riding in, my, in the car with my mom one day several times. I'll never forget this conversation. She looked at me and she was, I don't want you to be cheap. <laughs> She says, I don't want you to be cheap. Don't ever be cheap. Be generous. Hmm. How do I still remember that? It was just a dish. Stuck out. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow on the show, Stephanie Hansen, she's not cheap. She'll join us for some Crocktober. Yes. It's Crocktober here on The Jason Show. <laughs> and producer Ted is back reviewing week three of The Bachelorette. Wow. Wow. It's week three. Is Claire still there? I don't know. Is she still there for now? Okay. I'm very clairvoyant. I saw it. I saw it. She's it? still there. Okay. Okay. But but maybe maybe next week she'll be gone. Maybe. Hopefully. She is just a she's a tub of she's a tub of nutter butter mm -hmm. with a cracker and some bread. Extra large. Anyway, guys. that's gonna do it for us. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you are a kid and you are watching and you're being bullied, 
Go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you're doing it wrong. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, and we will see you tomorrow. Come on, Ke come on, Kendall. Let me go sing Gogan's Island to you.